Ah, uh, ba, 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 ba. here's are the stars ones I, had, I was looking at. Cosmos says, knowing we are getting into a recession after the bull run, recession or stagflation, one of those two, do we get out of the market completely? Is it worth the risk? So that's a great question. And it really comes down to, and I can't give you financial advice, but if it's me, I have to look at that and say, okay, where do, how much of this money can I let ride? Because it's going to be turbulent for a while. Am I okay with looking at a portfolio and going, wow, uh, I'm 30% down? Even after that story that we talked about with the uh, uh, Swiss mayor, uh, ba, 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 ba. Swiss mayor, Julius Bear, excuse me, Julius Bear, and saying, well, it's a pretty good outlook. Should I get out and should I go? We can diamond hands all day long, but in all honesty, I think it's it's a little bit better if you can have a little bit of cash reserve on the side and you don't feel that crushing pressure like the people who invested into Luna and they got crushed because they did way too much investing and they shouldn't have done that. Maybe it's an idea, just have a little bit of powder on the sidelines. To get out of the market completely, for me, that's a mistake because I see where things are going and I think now is the time for me personally to buy up crypto and digital assets. And I'm still dollar cost averaging the same thing, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum. I'm waiting for a little bit of confirmation for a bottom bottom. No one knows what the bottom is, but to see a reversal and then I'll get into a little bit more altcoins and we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> Arian says, give me the proof. Come on. Hopefully I gave you the proof that there is some good news. This is very bullish news. I like to see these things. Corey says, Rob, I don't care what people say about you. You're good, debatable. But I'll take it. I appreciate it. And then Beardy says, it is a beer market day. Yeah, it's a beer market. And uh, I'll probably be doing that right after this. So go from there. All right. So what else we got? Uh, I love the Q&A. When are you going to the pool? I'll tell you I'm going to the pool. First of all, when we hit 100K Bitcoin, I'll jump in there. I told you that already. <laughs> Paper hands need to stay dry hands. Uh, Andre Barbosa says, hi from someplace. Uh, hope hope you come here on the next European tour. So yeah, so I already talked to the to guys team over at Coin Bureau, and we'll do it again in in a year. It'll be another vacation for me. My wife will be happy. Uh, oh, it's a great question. How much are you down in your portfolio? Pretty substantial. I mean, look, uh, I was feeling I sold some crypto along the way. We all know that because I made it public, and I bought that house in Puerto Rico, and it wasn't cheap. So I had to sell a good amount. Oh, I had to sell a good chunk of, of crypto. And then I just started to re just do the same thing again, my dollar cost averaging. And uh, right now, I mean, first of all, the Luna that I was dollar cost averaging, that's all gone. That's, I can't remember how much it was. It was thousands, 10,000. I don't remember. 8,000. It was enough to make me go, damn it. I shouldn't have done that, but I was really happy. I didn't, you know, go all in like some people did. And then for Bitcoin, of course, I mean, I kept buying for quite some time. I stopped, I think, after like 50, 40 or 50K, although I should have kept buying, but I mean, it worked out pretty well. But uh, I've made some mistakes along the way. I would say, gosh, I'm down at least 40, 50. I don't remember, but it's, it's quite a bit. I don't really think about it too much day to day because I'm, the outlook for me is one year, three years, and five years, and even 10 years. So I look at that and go, I think it's okay. But the market itself does dictate how much I'm going to dollar cost average in. And right now is the time I think I'm going to go a little bit more heavier. And if I'm wrong and it slides down to the Bitcoin to 20,000 or 8,000, I'll probably buy, buy a little bit more or even put more of a percentage in than what I am doing right now. But I could be wrong. It could slide back. I will never hit the bottoms. I'll never sell the top. That's why I dollar cost average because it's the safest thing for me. Okay. Ah. Modern Samurai. Rob, do you still think it's worth it to stake AVAX? Sure, why not? You can stake AVAX, Avalanche. They don't have a stable coin, do they? Okay. I think it's okay. I still have it because when I stake my Avalanche, it's locked up for a year. So I think my year is coming up. But it's all up to you. I think there's different times. I think it's a 3, 6, three, six 9, and 12. Uh, I did a video on it. I just can't remember exactly. There's a, I'll try to link it in the description. But yeah, I can see you can stake a little bit. Uh, hey, Rob, do you think Shiba, another one from Modern Samurai. Hey, Rob, do you think Shiba will gain value if they continue to burn tokens? Why not? They could, but I mean, how many tokens does Shiba have? Is it like a trillion or trillions? Seems like a lot. Just saying. 
uh, I don't, I don't get into Shiva and it's not my thing. It's okay if it's your thing, but it's not, I don't really get into it. And it's not like it's just because I don't buy it doesn't mean that it's not a good coin. It's just, I don't buy it. So that's it. Uh, Seascape. Good point. We can do pay big taxes. So, well, just remember, you know, if you do take losses, I think you can take up to th in, the, in the United States, you can take up to $3,000 as far as losses and you can compound, not compound, but you can carry those over for years to years. So if you're like, ah, crap, you know, I'm going to send a lot of money uh, and you sell and you're at a loss. Remember, you can claim those on your taxes. It's okay. I mean, that's what the government's for. They haven't taxed you on unrealized gains yet and hopefully they don't. So just remember that. But yeah, we can pay taxes, but it depends on what you got to do. You got you to gotta pay your mortgage I mean, what do you, ah, that's it. Uh, let's see. Midtown cabinetry and designs. Let's go on. What's your hopeful time frame to retire? And how much crypto will you keep when you do? So here's a, here's a secret. Uh, it's not really a good secret. I'm already retired. So uh, since 2015 or so, um, I did, uh, as people know, I was in, uh, I was in healthcare, in the Army, 91, what, what was called the 91 Bravo back in 1997 to 2000. Five. I was a 91 Bravo, which is a medic. And then I wanted to get out of the field. So I became a 91 Charlie, which was, was a 91 Whiskey M6 and something else, which is a nurse. And then I got out uh, and then I went into healthcare management and I went into uh, sales for medical devices at KCI. And then I got into real estate and then I got into online education platforms and then Amazon FBA. So since, so since 2015, I was been essentially retired. I don't, didn't work for anybody else. And uh, I will. I wrote a blog post on Dan teaches crypto about how much retirement sucks. And I'm going to tell you, it's people think it's awesome, and you can just sit on the beach and and drink mai tais and, and just let your life slip away, which is fun for the first two or three months. But after that, you have to have purpose in life, and I think that's what's more important than just laying around. And I think that's what gives people drive is purpose. And that's why I did this channel because it's fun and I like uh, helping people out. All right. Hope that answered your question. Let's see. What's this? What's the lowest crypto valuation? I heard from Ben, probably Ben in the cryptoverse. That's around 600, 700 billion at the moment. So halfway to the bottom, potentially. And I think that's something that's, it's a good point. Uh, Jay Young Chow, I think I said that right. We have to be aware that there is super volatility. I mean, even though that those, the bad stories and the good stories and I, I, I talked about, there's going to be massive, massive swings. So you have to stomach it. And uh, if you can do that, probably come out on the other side doing okay. But uh, remember, we could see a 19,000 Bitcoin or maybe even a 12,000. I have no idea. But the question is, where do you think the crypto market is going? Do you think that the innovation that's being built, the rails that are being laid down, the big institutions that are getting in and the different whales that are buying up, do you think they know something maybe we don't know? Or maybe you think that uh, as time goes on, this will be the big disrupting technology that everybody uh, claims it is and actually has real world use cases. I tend to think it, it could be. And uh, even if it plays out a tenth, a tenth of what I think it is, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, let's see here. So here's a good one. Pentabuzz, when and how do you adjust your DCA amount? I learned a good deal from uh, Ben over into the cryptoverse. He's got a pretty good, first of all, he's got a great website. Let me just pull it up. It's called App Cryptoverse. I'll pull it up in a second. Hold on. And uh, there's some, because Ben's always, or Ben's telling me, hey, don't show too much. <laughs> okay. So like, let's see. Okay, let me, let me throw this in there. And like, it's all types of graphs and, and, and a bunch of them are, are proprietary. It's things that he's actually come up, not this one, but like, like risk assessments and return on investments and, and stuff like that. And they're really great. And I wish I could show it to you, but as the price of Bitcoin and the market goes down, there's these risk levels that I like to, to watch and follow. And once you go below a certain point, Ben talks about dynamically DCAing, meaning if you're spending, and it could be whatever you want to, if you're spending a hundred bucks a day on Bitcoin, if it hits another risk level between, let's say, because you know you have zero to zero, 
0, 0 0.1, 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 0.3. As it hits these different levels, as it goes down, you should actually increase your dollar cost average. So instead of 100, maybe you increase that by to be very conservative, 10%. So now, you, now every day you're doing $110. Then the next day it goes down even more, maybe $130. And then you can dynamically DCA down. Now here's the thing. And this is the thing that I'm, I had a hard time until recently is that you have to take profits on the way back up. So that depends on what you think it is. I will always say to my friends, they say, well, you know, how do you, what's a good strategy? Well, whatever you put in, at least be able to take back out and leave some as far as like uh, the money on the table for or house money so that you can just let it ride and then i learned also a good one from james in his video today he talks about setting up stop losses so if you had bought luna let's say at uh you know 100 let's say 50 bucks and then it went to 60 70 80 he took some profits and he had stop loss in when it rocketed back down you wouldn't have uh, lost and not not all the time because there's some pretty deadly wicks but as far as like adjusting my dca amount Mostly it's adjusting as things go down. And then as they start to go parabolic, I'll explain that later. But uh, I started to take more profits on the way up. And it's just like farming. So like if I plant a seed of, let's say, Bitcoin's at 20,000. Okay, let's say I just, okay, here's 100 bucks and it's 20,000. And like for the, the next 30 days, I put in 100 bucks and it's at 30,000. Then let's say it goes to 40,000. Okay, well then I'll, I'll keep dollar cost there. I'll put in hundred bucks at 40,000, but maybe those initial seeds that were at 30,000, well, I can take some of those profits. So there's seeds here and there's a level and the seeds here and there's a level and there's seeds here. You can do that and that's okay. And that's just how I do it. But uh, again, not financial advice. Uh, Douglas is quadrillion, which I think he's talking about Shiva. That's a lot. Uh, let's see. I got you. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> On a serious note, don't you feel like slapping James for all that eight of fud he spreads? Look, man, James just goes by by the information that he gets, and he's not a fan of Ada. I will say this: there is a, I think there's more fans of Ada nowadays, especially with, like, I was always a little dis distraught that they would go so slow, but sometimes uh, the slow, the slower version wins the race, or that meh, the safer version will win the race. And um, hey, Ada's never been down. It's 100% uptime, not like down as far as like monetary value, but as far as like the network itself. And they do have a working DEX, so everybody's known. They do have uh, some NFTs and things are working out pretty swimmingly, so we'll see how it all goes. All right. Wesley Snipes. Wixley Snipes. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, hey, that's a good question. Wash trading is still a thing, right? Yes. So we don't know what wash trading is. It's awesome. Uh, you can't do that in the traditional market. That is illegal. So what that means is, uh, let's. here's my example. Remember when XRP got, and they're still doing it, uh, they went through that, that process with the SEC? Well, the days that, it, that led that after that, yeah, XRP was, I think, a buck or something like that. And then it went down and down and down. And around 21 or 22 cents, I sold all my XRP. Sold it all. Uh, and then there's this thing called wash trading where you can buy it all back. And that's illegal in traditional equities, but not in crypto because crypto is defined in the U.S. government right now as property. So you sell it, you buy it right back, and you can claim those losses on your taxes. Now, you can only do a certain amount, but I can spread those out over years. And uh, that's totally legal. Now, they had talked about that in, in the bills in Congress to eliminate that for, for crypto, but not yet. So... Uh, that's what's happening. So if you ever want to say, hey, I want to legally claim losses and I don't have a boat, I didn't lose my ledger, then that's the way to do it. Uh, your choice. Why, not, why don't you give a portfolio? I, I've done it in my price prediction videos, which I'm going to stop, by the way. But my portfolio is pretty heavy Bitcoin, Ethereum. So we'll just say something like that. But I still own a bunch of alts. Let me see. Uh, let's see. I got, yeah, whatever. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Voyager, a lot of Voyager. Solana, Theta, Chainlink, Mana, VChain, Dot, Bat, only because they gave it to me for free. StormX, Stellar, Matic, 
Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiverse or MV, Gensu Kishi coin. Great project. If you want to do some real degen plays, I got a channel called Dan Degen. If you go over there, just know that you'll probably lose everything. But so far, we've had a pretty good luck. And uh, Gensu Kishi was one of those. Avalanche, Algo, Ave, XRP, Sand, EOS. I still own EOS. Uniswap, USDT. I don't know why I have that. Celsius, Dai, Atom, Engine, Chili's, Near, SPI. I didn't know I even had that. T Fuel. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, that's that's all I really have. Yeah. Oh, I have this thing called Dragon Chain. I don't know how to get rid of that. So that's my portfolio. And again, if you're looking at percentages, just know that Bitcoin and Ethereum is like the the vast vast majority. All right. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, Arden. Hey, Rob. What? effect do you think the merge will have on the ETH, ETH Bitcoin ratio? We're talking about the merge the merge for Ethereum 2.0, which isn't even called Ethereum 2.0 anymore. But uh, if it goes on without a, hitch, without a hitch, you can see that maybe Bitcoin dominance will drop a little bit. I think we're at 44% Bitcoin dominance, 44, 45%. So as far as the merge goes, it can only be positive. But again, we're in a bear market we're in a bear market. And usually it's a uh, buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing. Just be aware. What do I think about sand? The sandbox? I own land in sandbox. I like that place. Very pixelated, but I mean, works pretty well for mine, Minecraft. So we'll see. All right. Man, your choice. Why don't you grab a portfolio? You were really keened up on that portfolio thing. Okay, this is a great question. I don't have the right answer. I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I don't know. And I'll tell you what I think. And I don't know. Rob, do you know if the Terra plan will automatically reimburse my 40% loss? Had to cash in for 60 of USD stick and Binance. I lost a lot and can do with some advice. So I know that Do Kwan is trying to bring forth uh, this Luna new project, Luna, I guess Luna Classic, I guess. And uh, there is some rumblings, uh, people getting reimbursed. I don't know, not for sure. This will be something to, I can ask the community, all, all of you, if you guys know something, let me know. Or reach out to uh, Binance. Maybe they can help you. If they, they would probably know. But I did read an article today that uh, CZ Binance was saying that how poor he was after the Luna debacle. And I'm like, CZ, you still got a lot of money. I think you're okay. Yeah, that's right. I was at Fort Sam, Fort Sam Houston. Well, that's where all the medics go. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeff asks, do you still leave your crypto on exchanges? Yes. Do I leave a lot? No. Why don't I take it all off? Because I'm lazy. That's it. Uh, does that have an, I don't have any red flags to keep from DC? Look, there's a red flag for everything. Let's just be honest. So for me right now, the alts is not something I really want to get into. So I'm just staying away from a bit. We'll see which one plays out. And it would be interesting to see how many of these alts come back with force. Remember, uh, I would give you the example of uh, a dash assault. And uh, take a look at those two projects. I'm not saying that they're awful or anything, but they never, after 2017, they never hit their all-time high or anywhere near it. Not dash and not salt. And uh, you have to ask yourself, is this something that I really want to invest into? Same thing here with Avalanche. We'll see how they rebound or not. <laughs> James is a Solana maxi. James just looks at the data. He, he likes that, that he keeps talking TPS transactions per second. Real big. I don't know. I mean, I own it. I don't really care which one. I don't, honestly, I don't really care which one makes it. I don't. One of them is going to do it. And that's why I invest into a bunch of them. Uh, yes. Isn't taking profit selling? Absolutely. It is. Chiba the moon. Uh, any, no, that's a good question. Any updates on meld? No, uh, I need to get Ken Oling in here and, uh, he's the CEO and he, we had some great conversations. You know what? I'll do that. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I will do it. I'll get him back on there. Dog alert. Must be Chloe. Uh, the black one is Chloe and the brown one is Chewy.
And I think that's it. I think we're good. So where are we going? 42 minutes? Ah, Chain Guardians. I would like to see them go up. I, I do own Chain Guardians. I don't know why I didn't show up. We don't have it on my list. Yeah, these nuts. That's it. And then it's not like I just say these nuts for no reason. These nuts is a it's a great uh, NFT and a great community. Uh, they actually raise money for testicular cancer, and they also have one for, called Ladies, and they just donated fifty thousand for breast cancer awareness. It's a great community. I love those guys. Love them. Tomato. I own a lot of tomato coin. That's true. My name is Rob. It's just that, you know, you look at Digital Asset News, D-A-N, people just call me Dan. That's fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. No. Amp. No, but I met a couple of VCs in Puerto Rico, and they talked to me about how great Amp was. They knew the uh, creator, the founder, and just how, how big it's going to be. And they told me some insider information, which I really shouldn't say but I'll say it because it's hearsay. It's just a rumor. And uh, they said that uh, they've been talking pretty religiously with, uh, with Walmart, but you can't put any stock in that. That's just a, that's just cheese, man. It's just rumor. You can't base your investment strategy on that. Uh, still have faith in Voyager in the long term. Yes, I do. But it was surprising to me that uh, you had Voyager who they're really working hard with Market Rebellion and, and John Najarian and those guys to bring uh, securities or equities to their platform. And they've been working really hard. And here comes FTX out of nowhere and like, we did it. And we're rolling it out today. And then in a couple of months, it'll be for everybody in the United States, even New York. Like that's, that's amazing. I got to give it to him. Tip of the hat. What do you think of Solana? There's a great website. Uh, hold on. Have you guys seen this website? I'm a big head. All right. Where did I put it? I could have sworn. If you haven't followed me on, on uh, Twitter, good times. You're missing out. Uh, let's see. This one. What I'm looking for is there is a website that shows you what the uptime and downtime is with Solana in real time. And I put it up here, I could have sworn I saved it, but I didn't. Where is it? Oh, that's good. Again, Sokishi, uh, this is true. Uh, this is still holding true. The, uh, the Yao Shack Kevin indicator is still 100% accurate. Just letting you guys know that. Let's see. Ah, here it is. Status.solana.com. Status.solana.com. And you can check this out and you can just see like, you know, what's up, what's operational. I mean, all honesty, 90 days, 99.6% uptime, 99.4%, 97%. Uh, transaction count. This was as interesting. TPS on the main net is 6,400. So... Let me see here. On Thursday, the 185,000. Maybe that's just the low that it has right now. Yeah. Because like over here, it has 185,000, which is pretty good. So yeah, if you want to take a look at Solana, it looks pretty solid I mean, as far as what's going on. But if you're going to, if people are going to complain that it's, it's down, you, you just check that out and that's the proof you need. Okay, hope that helps. But yeah, I like it. I mean, I don't know what's going to, how well it's going to do, but I mean, so far, price is an indicative of that, but doesn't price doesn't mean much. I mean, it still might be a great project. We'll see. Uh, Visa has 65,000 TPS. That's very true. <laughs> okay. So Sasha says, Rob, will you reconcile the two opposite approaches you described separately in one statement? At times it's take profits on the upswing at others it's a whole different yes so here's the thing let's say you have a million dollars a million dollars in a bitcoin okay and you're looking at this and you're like okay i have a million dollars 
No, no, no. That's not a good example. Here's a better example. You have a million dollars in Luna. Okay. And it goes from, or let's say you have a million tokens in Luna and it goes from a 35 cents to a dollar. Now you're a millionaire. Then it goes to $10. Now you're the multimillionaire. Then it goes up to 50 and 75 and a hundred. Do you think it's a good idea to hold the whole time and not take any profits along the way and just let it ride all the way up and then ride it all the way back down? So when I say take profits, I'm not saying like you need to sell every single crypto that you possibly have and then just sit on cash. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying just like I talked about with, with the dollar cost average and the seed analogy, if you want to do that, and I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you this is what I do is that you can dollar cost average in a certain price, and then those seeds are just sitting there to be harvested at some point. Then when the next price comes in, you dollar cost average there, and then up and down, up and down. And then when you're in profit from the original dollar cost average, you take a little profits and let whatever you think is possible to ride it out. So hopefully that answers your question. I don't know if I said that right. I think I did. Ah, ha. <laughs> Rob, are you still 100% faithful to Voyager for both no, short, and long term? Don't get married to anything. That's what I'll tell you right now. But, and I got to tell you, I mean, remember that last little run that we had when everything collapsed and uh, people were trying to sell and do those types of things? And like, not just for Luna, some people got, got stopped out. But did Voyager crash during that time? That was a lot of volume. A lot of people were selling like crazy. No. Also, did Coinbase crash? I don't think it did either. So that's a step in the right direction. And then for what, what my needs are, it works out pretty well for me because I just dollar cost average and I don't really want to think too much about it. Now, for somebody who's like, I'm not going to use Voyager because their fees, I can get a better over on Coinbase Pro. Go right ahead. Check out Coinbase Pro. But for me, don't get married to anything, and uh, I'll see how it goes. I would like to see them roll out those equities in that Voyager Loyalty Program 2.0. Yeah. And then Lasse Raffin uh, says, do you know Pulse Chain or PulseX? Yes, that's uh, Richard Hart's project, and I get to uh, talk about it all the time. And, of course, you can sacrifice your Ethereum and let it roll up. That sounds interesting. I just won't do it. And it's the same thing as, like, Shiba, and all the different things that I don't get into, I just don't, I don't get it. And uh, I'm going to pass on a lot of things, and those things can be huge. I just, I can't, I can't catch them all, man. And if you think that's going to be great, great. Do your own research and uh, tell me how it goes. I have no idea. I don't have no idea. I've had Richard Hart on the show. Reasonable guy. Some, a lot of people hate him. Some people say he's, he's this or that. Some people say he's a scammer. Some people say I'm a, a shill. Well, they're right, though. So, yeah, on the show part, so whatever. Uh, okay, here's a good question. I think at the top of the, ooh, we got to get going. It's 50 minutes. Hey, Dan, love your content question. Would you still stay in the crypto and equities if you are planning to buy the real estate in first quarter of next year? So, Mohit, it's a good question. And I'm, I'm not, me and my wife have decided to not buy any more property until the prices come down. Unfortunately, the rates will go up. And as the rates for loans on houses go up, then most people say, you know what, that's the, we're looking at the amortization table for what we're going to pay over 15 and 30 years. That's way too much. That's what we're waiting for. And uh, it's going to take right now. I think we're sitting around 4.15, somewhere around there. Correct me in the comments. Once it gets to the sevens, six and a half sevens, that's when the prices will come down and there'll actually be a better supply of houses. So I am not seeing that even in the first quarter of next year, maybe, but uh, would I stay in crypto? And equity? I'll always be in crypto. And equities, I don't really own that much. I own Amazon and, and Tesla and, uh, uh, not Riot, Mara. It's a mining company. But uh, I really like uh, properties much, much better, much easier for me, less stress. And, you know, we do short-term rentals, Works out pretty well. Also, it's an appreciating asset, hands down. Okay. Uh, thanks, man. The chat is going pretty strong today. <laughs> well, I say, buy 10 billion million Shiba and leave it. Not a bad idea. 
Okay. Yeah, that's right. I'll leave out with this. Oh, hey, Slayer. Open up an iTrust account. Ever seeing it here. Thanks. For yeah. So remember, if you don't like paying taxes, there's a great way to do it. It's called opening up a Roth IRA. And I think this is the time to do it. So there's a link in the description for iTrust. I trust them. I, hilarious. I trust them for their uh, diligence on the custody. They use what was called Curve. Now it's uh, another um, uh, institution grade custody as well as Coinbase custody. And that's where I believe MicroStrategy used it as well. So uh, nothing wrong with them. I like them. If they would just get on with the staking part, imagine being able to stake your crypto in a Roth IRA, which gains no taxes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, that's right. And Jungle, celebrity in the house, Jungle, uh, no monthly maintenance fees. It used to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Jungle, like 30 bucks a month or something like that. 30 bucks a month. And then they just wipe those out. No more monthly fees. Now you got to pay a trading fee. It's like 1%. So if you're going to trade inside your, your IRA or Roth IRA account, you can do that. But here's what, you know, what's cool though, is that if you know how Bitcoin fell. So if you sold your Bitcoin at 40,000, it just converts into cash. And then it goes down to 30,000. You can buy Bitcoin at 30,000, have cash in your IRA, have Bitcoin in your, in your IRA, the same thing. You don't pay taxes. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. Okay. That's it. So today, what I'll do for you here who are on the live stream, thanks. But for the people outside Europe and Australia and India, those other places, if you, if, a lot of people can't wake up that early. So this will be cut and I'll put that in a separate video. So if you see that on YouTube and you're already seen it, doesn't mean you don't have to watch it. All right, I gotta go. So look, I appreciate everybody for stopping by and just chatting with me. It's always fun. It's always good times. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Don't look at your portfolio too much uh, every single day. Things will be better as time goes on. Thanks.